This video explains the installation and usage of the OT-Base Asset Discovery Engine. OT-Base Asset Discovery is a product component of Langner's OT-Base Asset Management Platform. As the name suggests, it automatically discovers the identity and configuration of PLCs, RTUs, computers, network switches and other devices, both in process networks and in IT networks. Asset Discovery does so by actively probing devices using legitimate protocols and credentials. In a production environment, asset configuration data discovered by Asset Discovery is automatically transmitted to an OT-based asset center for consolidation, analysis and presentation. However, the link to the OT-based asset center will not be discussed in this video, it is covered in a different one. Here we focus on fine-tuning OT-based asset discovery for best results. Technically, OT-based asset discovery is implemented as a Windows service, which does the actual probing, plus a Windows application, which acts as the configuration front-end. In a production environment, the front-end is only used to configure new asset discovery nodes. However, for evaluation purposes, you can use the front-end to understand selective probing and to access the quality of discovery results delivered by OTBase. To install OTBase Asset Discovery, execute the software image that you have downloaded from langner.com. Read and accept the license agreement and specify the desired folder for program installation. Next, you can select port numbers for NetFlow and SFlow data. NetFlow and SFlow are services that some network switches support where they tell you about data flow. Asset Discovery is capable of digesting this information and will use it to tell you about any network communications originating from or descent for a device that you selected in the discovery window, but we'll discuss this later. If your network gear does not support NetFlow and SFlow, you may simply deselect the checkboxes. In this dialog, you can change the number of the TCP port through which the OT-based asset discovery service and the configuration client exchange data. We suggest to leave the port number at the default setting. The next dialog is about a low-level system library that is used internally by asset discovery. If this library is installed already on your computer, you can skip this step. And that's it for the installation. So once that you finish the installation, if you have checked this box, you will start OT-based asset discovery automatically. Once that asset discovery is started, you need to log on. And this is what this dialog is for. Make sure that you select this window and then as a user, as the default user, you type in admin and the password that you have received during the download. In my example, you see that the systems table is already populated, but this is just for speeding things up. In when you first launch OT-based asset discovery, your device table will be empty. However, before you even start probing, it might fill up with uh, devices that send out ARP requests for the asset resolution protocol and such requests will be detected by asset discovery and the, uh, and the IP addresses in question will be inserted in the table. However, let's not uh, move too fast. The first thing you want to do after installation is to click on the general settings configuration where you can change the default access credentials. You don't need to worry about the asset discovery node name. This only um, is important once that you start using OT-based asset discovery in a full production environment with an OT-based asset center. Next, let's look at this tab right here. Here you can specify default credentials for Windows Management Instrumentation access and for SSH access to Unix and Linux systems. As you can see, there are some default credentials set and they will be used if you don't 
specify any other more specific credentials for a network or even for a single device, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The next step in the configuration affects the network settings. Once that you click on the settings button, you see that OT Base Asset Discovery presents you with a table of network interfaces that were identified on the machine where you have installed the software. Now, in our case, we are looking at five network interfaces. In your case, it might be just one interface. However, as you can see, OT Base Asset Discovery does support multiple network interfaces, which is very convenient. If you have a box which you want to use for the discovery and that box is attached to multiple network segments. You can specify symbolic names for each network by simply double clicking on the name field and then just providing the name that describes such network. Certainly this makes most sense when you actually do use multiple networks. Now we select the network that we want to configure and then look at the settings on the right. Again, we, you can see the name of this network and now below you have the opportunity to specify the probing settings that shall be used for this particular network. It all starts with ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. First, you can check this box on, on, on or off to tell OT Base Asset Discovery if it shall send out ARP requests in order to identify devices in this network segment. If you deselect this box, your probing will be quite limited because OT Base Asset Discovery will not be able to identify any device on the network other than those devices that are already known. So we strongly suggest to select this box. As you can see here in the next field, you can apply a break to the ARP probing if you are concerned about network bandwidth. So you can just uh, limit the number of packets per second that OT Base Asset Discovery sends out. And just to make sure that you get the full picture, OT Base Asset Discovery in automatic mode only probes once per day, once every 24 hours. Certainly in your testing in your evaluation, you can manually send out probes just by clicking the mouse, which we will be doing in a couple of minutes. This next area is about SNMP, the Simple Network Management Protocol that is also used by Asset Discovery. Again, you can enable or disable this setting. And if it is enabled, anything that was previously discovered by ARP will then be probed using SNMP. However, keep in mind, and we'll discuss that later, that you can modify the default setting for any individual system, for any device, and we'll discuss that later. In these next two fields, you can specify the SNMP version, which is now set to auto discovery, and the community string. Here we are using default settings. Next is WMI, the Windows Management Instrumentation. Enable or disable it. And what you see here is that the credentials are not taken from the global settings, but we are using credentials specifically for this network. So we are overwriting the global settings. And we could also provide a different password if we had to. The same for SSH. Again, you can choose global settings, network settings, or even device specific settings. Next is Profinet. If you don't have any Profinet devices in your installation, you would simply disable this setting. Then we have Modbus, where you can only enable or disable. For Modbus, Asset Discovery sends out function 43 codes in order to discover the identity of the devices in question. 
and last there is ethernet ip which you can also enable or disable and you can specify a timeout for uh, the results so with that being done we are ready to probe first again in this button up there you can select the network that you want to probe in our case we just leave it at plant bus 55 and all we need to do then is to click on probe and now what you see is OTBS asset discovery tells you in the table what it is presently doing In the meantime, we can just click on any device that we are interested in and browse through the various device details in this area on the right. So first of all, in this button up here, this, this opens up a menu where you can select various areas of device details that you're interested in. So you can inspect the identity, the hardware, software data, all the software applications and firmware versions that are installed on the device. You can check for any hardware modules such as I.O. modules in an RTU. This is about the network connections. Here you will learn about the data flow for this device. In this next area you can change the configuration settings for this individual device so if you want to use configuration settings that are not equal to the network settings then you can specify those settings here individually for the device and, and lastly there is a diagnostics area which shows you some diagnostic information which you might be interested in if the probing doesn't work as expected but anyhow, let's just go step by step. Let's just uh, inspect the hardware information for this sample device that we have picked down here. Once that you select a, an entry in the table, you see the, de the details to the right. And here are the hardware details that have been discovered by Asset Discovery. So you see things like the uh, vendor name, make and model. Uh, you see the serial number, version and the order number. Let's move to software. It shows us the firmware version. Oh, excuse me. Then you see any I.O. modules that are installed in this RTU. And by the way, what you see here is just the, uh, the reference IDs of the hardware products. And once that this data is sent to the OT-based asset center, it will be translated to human readable text. But asset discovery only shows you the IDs, the numerical IDs. So don't be surprised about that. Then uh, you see the connections, the network connections of this device. So it tells us the IP address and the MAC ID. Here we can see any connections, any data flow. And this is the area where we can fine tune the configuration, the probing configuration for this individual device. So as an example, we could specify uh, we don't need any SSH probing for this device because we already know that it is an RTU which uh, can be accessed by a Profinet. So we can simply disable SSH for this device same thing for WMI, disabled. Um, SNMP. SNMP apparently did turn up a result, as we can see here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be listed in this field, in the device table. So we leave SNMP enabled. We leave Profinet enabled. Modbus didn't turn up a result. We could disable it if we wanted to however it doesn't hurt in this case 
and Ethernet IP also didn't turn up anything. And then we click on set. And that's about it. So we can do this browsing for any um, device that we see in the results table. So let's just go back to another, so a different device. Let's look at the identity, hardware, software, and that looks very much different from what you have seen earlier for the RTU. So here you see all the software applications, the operating system version, and also the security patches that have been identified on this Windows box. Connections. In this example, we do get data flow information, so we can see all the counterparts of this system, all the other IP addresses uh, that have exchanged data with that device. And you can also see the protocols that have been used. For any area that you specify here in the device details, you can also just uh, browse through the various devices in the table to the right. So if I just move uh, with the cursor keys up and down, you see that this information is updated, which gives you a very nice opportunity to quickly check uh, for the results in, a, in, a, in any given area. So if I do the same thing, for example, for hardware, So that works very nicely. The only other thing that you need to know about probing is that you can individually probe devices by opening up the context menu with the right mouse click. And this allows you to refresh probing results, results only for this individual device using all the protocols that have been successfully used earlier or probe this individual device by using the, all the configured protocols either for the individual device if there are individual settings and if there are not just use the default protocols for this network. And then finally you can add a new device from anywhere so also in, in that area down here where no entries are you can right click the mouse and add a new device and here you can specify an IP address and the purpose of this entry is, let's just assume that you think some device was not properly detected. That can happen, for example, if the device doesn't respond to ARP requests, uh, then you can just uh, manually input the device uh, right here, click on OK. And then for this new device, OT-based asset discovery will start right away probing that address using all the protocols that have been configured for this network. If you are using asset discovery in a standalone fashion, just to evaluate the product, then that's pretty much all you need to do. You don't need to bother with the export to asset center or export to file. The export doesn't give you anything in standalone mode because every, every configuration data that is saved by OT-based asset discovery is encrypted, so um, you, you can't make any use of the exported file. And uh, you also want to make sure that in the general settings, you just uh, deselect this checkbox because uh, obviously one, uh, the, unless you already have OT-based asset center up and running, this doesn't make any sense. So that's about it. We will discuss the configuration settings for the export to OT-based asset discovery in a subsequent video. And if you are interested in evaluating the product, just download a copy from our webpage langner.com and just start probing.